Okay, so this is not the video that I thought we would be making about the Montreal Canadiens in 2023. However, as Kent Hughes has had his ups and he's had his downs, you could very well say he's had more ups, to be fair. This is arguably the biggest mistake that he has made as the Canadiens GM thus far. And it's not in particular because of one thing that he did, but more so, probably so, because of something that he didn't do. Let's head over onto Montreal Hockey Now because an article published by Marc Dumont from yesterday goes over essentially what this biggest problem happens to be. Now, I'm not going to read the title of the article because that would kind of give it away, but I will leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and look at this entire thing yourself. Now, what we're talking about in today's video isn't necessarily new. We have made a few videos over the past few years even going over this particular player, his situation in Montreal, as well as just how poorly things have gotten as of late. And I think it should come to no surprise to anybody that our mainstay conversation in this video is going to revolve around Josh Anderson. Anderson is 29 years old, big winger, 6'3", 220, right-handed guy signed to the end of 2027, making $5.5 million a year, and the guy has zero goals and two assists in 17 games played. He is on pace for roughly 10 points on the season, which would be a pretty significant decline from all the other years he has had as a member of the Blue Jackets and especially as a Canadiens winger. We talked about this in the video a few days ago, but RDS had themselves a graphic wherein it displayed the Montreal Canadiens forwards and their expected goals shares with versus without Josh Anderson, and it turned out that Anderson was such an anchor on the lines of all of the significant Canadians forwards that they all happened to play better without Anderson on their wings rather than with. It was a pretty unique conundrum and one of these things that I don't really think is too much of a common idea. Like, you don't normally see players perform so poorly that they bring down all the numbers of everybody they happen to play with. And that's not to say that Josh Anderson has been the worst player in the world. He certainly is not a terrible player. He's just not the player I feel like the Canadians need, nor is he really somebody that fulfills a role that they set out to him. It's a pretty big disconnect between what Anderson provides as a talent skill set, as well as what the Canadians wanted out of him when they initially traded Max Domi over to Columbus to get him in the first place and signed him to that big deal. We had our reservations about whether or not the contract was good, $5.5 million a year till the end of 26-27. Back in this time frame when the contract was signed, there were some saying, hey, this is going to be pretty bad, the guy's going to age poorly. Then you had some other people saying, hey, wait, but if he actually produces well, enough and he recovers from his injuries, that in which he was sustaining at the time, then this could be a pretty good acquisition, especially if he ages gracefully into the next few years. Well, when it comes to that contract, this is what the recent Mark Dumont article on Montreal Hockey Now goes out there and says, Canadians must address the mounting Anderson problem. The Habs had a golden opportunity to maximize one of their assets last season, an opportunity that Kent Hughes failed to recognize. With several teams interested in acquiring Josh Anderson due to his physical prowess and affinity for scoring goals, the Canadians received offers from around the NHL, including from teams like the Calgary Flames. Back in November 2022, I suggested the Canadians would be wise to trade Anderson soon. It wasn't because he was playing particularly poorly, but it was clear he did not fit into head coach Martin St. Louis' offensive strategy. Now, before we move forward into the article here, there are some extra pieces that are linked talking about how Josh Anderson was indeed a trade target from the Calgary Flames as far back as one year ago. There was an idea of a Milan Lucic trade for Josh Anderson that in which the Canadians might have refused, and there were a few prospects tossed around there, Coronado, Jakob Pelche. A few guys that could have been in that conversation, and essentially, the article from yesterday talks about how the Canadians had a golden opportunity to trade this guy away for a player like Milan Lucic, whose contract was going to expire, or a prospect that in which would be able to help out the Canadians long term. The Flames had interest in Anderson, this was back when they were competitive, this was before everything turned to crap and we were all saying that the Huberdeau and Nazem Kadri acquisitions would be so good. They haven't been, but whatever. 
This is the article from earlier yesterday. Let's flash back over to this piece. More than anything, the logic behind trading a player such as Anderson is that his perception in GM circles exaggerated his actual value on the ice. The risk was that Anderson, who is a streaky scorer, may not be able to sustain his offense. His underlying numbers suggested that there were no guarantees as to his ability to maintain his production level. Essentially, the article is saying that back in 2022, November, Josh Anderson had this reputation around the NHL that said that maybe he's a little bit more valuable to NHL GMs than he actually is on the ice. Like, the profile, he's a power forward, big dude, strong skater, north-south skater, and he can drive to the net, snipe some goals. This was a valuable thing, especially for a guy that had helped the Montreal Canadiens in their Stanley Cup final run. Sure, he didn't produce the most in that season, or at least in that run itself, but he was a fairly productive player who had a specific skill set. He was a clutch player when the Canadiens went to the finals, scoring the goals against Toronto, scoring some very important markers. But you could say that reputation might not actually correspond with the real on-ice value that Anderson would continue to have with the Canadiens. Dumont goes out there and writes this in the piece. Fast forward a year after, everybody's talking about Anderson being valuable. And not only has he failed to register a goal after 17 games, but his trade value throughout the NHL has surely taken a significant hit. The article then talks a little bit more about how the Canadiens are using him, playing with Suzuki, etc, etc, but I mean, look, Things aren't good with this experiment. The article goes over into a few extra numbers, etc. Pretty much, Anderson playing with Suzuki hurts the team. It makes the line worse, it makes Suzuki's effectiveness worse. Anderson, as we had talked about in the video a few days ago, literally brings down the quality of play of so many of these top tier forwards on the squad. And it's kind of insane when you think about it like that. Essentially, what this article is saying is that Anderson is a problem, and the Canadians need to go out there and find a way to get this done, where they rid themselves of that contract, or they give him an actual chance and a meaningful pass towards getting better at playing hockey. Because now, I mean, you look at everything in hindsight and you say, darn it, the Canadians had a chance to trade away Anderson for, what, a year of Milan Lucic? A prospect that would be pretty good right now? The Habs had the opportunity to free up $5.5 million in cap space and get rid of one of the, let's just say, worst players in the top six so far, and they could have gotten that done a year ago. Now, I get it. This is all with the benefit of hindsight. You know, they always say, never do your investment research based off of what you coulda, shoulda, woulda done, because that doesn't really work out. You're always looking at hindsight. You're biased. It's tough to really analyze things and where they're going to go in the future, unless, of course, you're going into regular index funds that have very great historical values over the past few decades. Very safe options out there. A lot more than some of the other penny stocks and cryptos that you could find. But either way, you know, they always say, don't beat yourself up because you missed out on a stock gaining 400% in a week. That's what the benefit of hindsight. Oh, you can't get mad at Kent Hughes. That's what the benefit of hindsight. But the reason Mark Dumont is going out there and making this article is because he did say a year ago that the Canadians probably would be in a better position to trade Anderson away. Not necessarily because it was expected that he'd be on pace for 10 points in an 82-game season in 23-24, but simply because back then you could debate that his value amongst the eyes of NHL GMs was much higher than it probably should have been considering what he was and what he was going to be. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the idea of Josh Anderson being the worst mistake Kent Hughes has made? Not because he acquired Anderson or signed him to that contract. We can talk about the Mark Bergevin decisions all we want, but when it comes to not trading away Josh Anderson a year ago when his value was arguably at its peak, do you think that it's fair to call this the biggest mistake by Kent Hughes so far? as the GM of the Montreal Canadiens, and as the guy who is commanding the ship. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Ash Rolls 99, and bye.